All right, guys, today we're going to talk about voltage and current dividers. So in the last class, we learned about voltage, current, circuit properties. Uh, we, looked at, we looked at resistors. We looked at Kirchhoff's current law and voltage law. So today we'll try to apply these to come up with quickly concepts of voltage and current division. What do they really mean? So let's start with a simple example. So let's say I had a circuit like this with a voltage source V in. A resistor R1 and another resistor R2. So here's R1, here's R2. Okay. Now, if I have a simple circuit like this, uh, I take a look. I can solve this using all the approaches that we learned last week already. Uh, I look up here and I see that there's a node, this node right here. Let me call that node uh, A. Let me call that node A. And I'll call the bottom node right here, this node right here, node B. What I find is that the voltage across node A, B is the same as the input voltage source, which is V in. Okay, that's what I find. Now, at the same time, what I also see is that the resistor R1, this resistor right here, and this resistor R2 are also in series with each other. And in fact, if I look at it, R1 and R2 combined is also between nodes A and B. So really, if I wanted to say the voltage uh, of R1 plus the voltage of R2 is the same as the voltage input uh, coming in. So that's what we have so far. All right? Now, let's do this. Now, let's do this. Let's label the current coming out of the source. So let's call that current I. All right? Now, that current is coming out. And now that current, basically, just like uh, when water comes out of a pipe, there's no branches here. So that current basically goes through R1, goes through R2, and goes back. So the current, the same current I1 essentially flows through R1, and it flows through R2 as well. So uh, let's do this. So now since that current flows through it, what is the voltage across R, uh, resistor R1? Be, using Ohm's law, we can say that the voltage across R1 is I times R1. Similarly, the voltage across R2, Vr2, is I times R2. So using that, if I go back here, I times R1 plus I times R2, and that's the voltage across the resistor 1 and voltage across the resistor R2. Now, if I take I out, common between here, I have R1 plus R2, and that's equal to V in. Let me write, rearrange everything and write down that the current is in fact equal to V in divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, so this is the current flowing through R1, it's the current flowing through R2, it's a current coming out of the source in this particular situation. Now what is voltage R1? Remember, if you remember, voltage R1 is voltage R1 is I R1, so I times R1. We just came up with a value for I, which basically says V in over R1 plus R2, and then this is the I, so this whole thing multiplied by R1. So if I rewrite this, I can rewrite this as R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in. Okay, that's my voltage across. Therefore, the voltage VR1 is equal to this. Now let's see what uh, voltage across R2 is. VR2 is I times R2. And by similar would be, if we replace that, So I can rewrite this again in a similar kind of format, and I see R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V in. Now I want you to look at VR1, and I want you to look at VR2. So I want you to focus on these two guys right here. right? So I want you to focus here, the equation for this and the equation for this. Now what do you see common between these expressions? Right, so in a circuit like this, so in a circuit like this, in a circuit like this, 
in a circuit like this where you have two resistors in series and a voltage source supplying the power to this uh, particular circuit, I see that if I want to find out what the voltage across this top resistor is, if I want to find out what the voltage across that top resistor is, essentially I take resistor R1, divide that by the sum of the resistance in that circuit, so R1 plus R2. So it's a ratio of that re resistance over the total resistance in that circuit times the Vn. So the voltage divides proportionally across R1 and R2. Look at the VR2. VR2 is given as R2 divided by the sum of the resistance. So if I wanted to find the voltage right here in R2, I would simply write down R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So the voltage Vn gets divided proportionally uh, based on the values of R1 and R2. Right? So let's say let's say that I had R1 was 10 ohms and let's say R2 was 5 ohms. Right? And let's say Vn was 10 volts as well. Right? So 10 volts is being divided. Well, I look at this e equation and I see uh, this is basically telling me since the resistance R1 is 2 times the resistance R2, the voltage that will be spread across or divided here will be two times the voltage that's divided here. So let's see if that's correct. So if I plug in those values, I get 10 over 10 plus 5, which is 15. That's the sum of the resistance, right? 10 ohm and 5 ohm, that's how I got 15. R1 was 10. And then I, I said that the voltage was 10 volts, right? So this is essentially, I sort of have 5, 2, 5, 3, so 20 by 3 volts, right? So 6.67 .6 volts, okay? That's what this comes out to be. Let's take a look here. R2 is essentially what? 5 divided by 15 times 10. So 5 times 3, so that's 10 thirds of a volt. Uh, which is 3.33. So, so the voltage across R1 is two times the voltage across R2. And that we see because the resistance R1 is two times resistance R2. So it, this is basically so you an application of voltage division. So Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Ohm's law, they all work. But in a pinch, when you have a simple circuit like this with these kind of structure where the resistors are in series, you should be able to quickly use the voltage division formula or this kind of formula to figure out what the voltage is. Okay, so let's see another quick example here. So let me do, make it a really complicated ex example, right? So let me draw, uh, okay, let me draw a Vn, I'll call it Vx, all right? And I'm going to make it really difficult because there's one resistor, two resistor, three resistor, four resistor, five resistor, let's say. Okay. And what I want to find out is I'll call this R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. Okay. Uh, let's say the voltage Vx in was, I don't know, 12 volts. Okay. Uh, let's call this 2 ohms, 2 ohms, let's call this 2 ohms, let's call this uh, 2 ohms as well, and let's say all of them are 2 ohms, let's say they're all 2 ohms, okay? All right, I want to find out what is V across resistance R3. I'm not interested in anything else, I just want to find out what VR3 is. Now this is where the voltage division would come in handy. So if I take a look at this circuit, what I find is that if I start at the voltage source, right? if I start at the voltage source, I find that all the resistors are actually in series. Right? I essentially see that they're all in series. Now, since they're all in series, voltage is going to divide proportionally based on the value of these resistors. In this case, I see that all of the resistors, right? I'm, I made up this problem. So all of these resistors have equal voltage, I mean equal resistance, to up to ohm. So that means the 12 volt is going to divide equally between the five resistors 
So 12 volt divided by uh, you know two ohm resistors. So they're going to divide equally across these five resistors. That's the intuitive sense, right? So let's let's see what we get using a voltage divider formula. So the voltage divider formula basically says if I want to find a voltage across a resistor in a network like this where everything is in series, then I can basically say that the voltage that's that is across R3 is simply the value of R3 divided by the sum of all five resistors right here, okay, times the total voltage in, which is Vx in this case. So in this case, it's going to be two, the two total resistance there in series, so two plus four, six, eight, ten, times, I call it 12 volts. So 24 divided by 10 equals 2.4 volts. And R3 is, uh, the voltage across R3 is 2.4 volts, uh, and that's what we uh, got using voltage dividers. Okay? And intuitively, that makes sense too, because 2.4 times 5 is basically 12 volts. Right? Now, okay, so great. So that was awesome, because uh, all of these were the same value, so I was able to quickly uh, verify that. Well, let's, uh, let's make this difficult. Let's make this 1 ohm. Oops, sorry. Uh, let's make this 1 ohm. Let's make this 2 ohm. Let's make this 3 ohms. Okay, and I want to find out uh, what the other the other two can remain 2 ohms. It doesn't matter, right? If that was the case, then what is really uh, the value of the voltage across R3? Again, in this case, we basically take this. So that means the value across uh, the voltage across R3 is going to be the value of R3, which is 3 ohms now. Uh, divided by the total resistance, which has changed now because I made up new values uh, for the resistance. I think it changed. So let's see. 2 plus 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now, apparently, I didn't change that because I manufactured this problem again. So it's 3 tenth. Oops. I don't want the eraser. I seem to keep getting an eraser. All right. All right, now it's right here, 10, 3 tenth times 12. So 12 times 3 is 36, all right? So that's no longer 24, so that's so that's what we got before, but now it's 36 divided by 10 equals 3.6 volts, okay? So we, that's what we got. Now, well, I, let me look at it. So R3 is actually the largest resistor there. It kind of makes sense that before it was 2 ohms and now it's 3 ohms, so it kind of makes sense that it might uh, go up because the overall total resistance didn't change. Okay. Well, in a circuit like this, you can always check the answer because you know multiple ways of finding uh, the particular problem. So let's go find uh, using uh, just simple uh, Kirchhoff's uh, simple uh, Ohm's law what the answer should really be. Okay. If I want to find out the total resistance, right? So we said. So the total resistance RT is equal to 10 ohms. We said that, right? Uh, current is V in divided by RT. So 12 volts divided by 10, which is 1.2 amps. So voltage across R3 then should just be I, which is 1.2 amps, times uh, V equals I times value of R, which is 3, so it equals... 3.6 volts. So we've verified the answer that we got from voltage divider using our uh, knowledge of a simple Ohm's law. Okay, so that's voltage divider. So in this kind of scenario, where is it useful? Where circuits are in series like this. Okay, now let's see a different kind of scenario where a circuit is not in series, but the resistors are like this. Let's call this R1. Let's call this R2. And let's say we have a current source, I, like this. And the question is, how does current I going through here, it goes to this junction. We know it divides as I1, and we know it divides as I2. And the question is, how does it divide? Right. So that problem like this is called the current division problem. 